Did you just finish a build in your shiny new NZXT S340 Elite and realize that damn, it doesn't come with a front intake fan and this will almost definitely hugely impact temperatures, mean that you can't overclock your CPU, GPU and just generally become a failure at life? Well, this video is gonna put that to the test. How badly do you need to spend money on an intake fan for your shiny new build? Fans, airflow, cooling, I guess. These are all words that people use a lot when talking about overclocking. And today I want to put one of those points to the test using the NZXT S340 Elite. The NZXT S340 is a case that's been wildly popular for a very long time. And it's very popular for a reason. It's cheap, good looking, and it's pretty functional. You can build pretty much any system you want in it, unless you want to do, go particularly crazy on water cooling. Um, I've got one behind me here. It's the Elite variant, which means it comes with this weird puck thing, which I have uh, here, half of it at least, here, and the other half is here. Um, yeah, it goes together so that you can hang your headphones or VR or whatever off the front of the case. Um, and it comes most importantly, in my opinion, with a tempered glass panel. None of that acrylic nastiness. But one of the most glaring omissions from the case, in my opinion, is the fact that it only comes with exhaust fans. One in the back here, uh, 120 in the back and 120 in the top. It doesn't come with an intake fan, but you can't be too mad at NZXT about that because it is a really cheap case and it pro probably would have been a pretty rubbish fan if they did include one. So then I thought, how much of a difference does it actually make populating the intake fan in the case um, when it comes to temperatures of components? Because you hear everywhere that airflow is extremely important and that it makes a huge difference when it comes to overclocking and just temperatures in general. So I decided to put that to the test with the system that I have built back here. Now if you're interested in the exact specifications of the build behind me, um, do look at the video in the description linked below. There's a whole trilogy where I do kind of like a breakdown of the build, the build itself and some benchmarks of it. So you can have a look there to see kind of how it performs and what it's made of. But I'll give a short breakdown uh, because there is a little bit of a difference with this one in particular. Uh, first of all, it's got an i5-7600K, which has been overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. Um, something which, you know, I could push it further, but it's, it's an overclock that's comfortable on the H7 Cryo cooler that I have in there. And instead of the GTX 1060 that I have in the build linked in the description below, I decided to put a 1080 in it. Um, it's also a Palette Super Jetstream card, but I thought this test would work well with a higher GPU heat output. And I think it's quite a good graphics card to test this kind of airflow difference with because, well, it's really open. Um, the shroud doesn't direct any heat out the back of the card. I'm actually pretty surprised that it has like vented grills in the back because none of the air is going out. Um, all of it's just being dumped straight into the case. So to keep a graphics card like that cool or a system with a graphics card like that cool, you do need some pretty good airflow. And um, yeah, otherwise the fan that I decided to use is um, a Fractal Design GP140. Uh, one of them placed in the bottom 140 millimeter fan mount in the case. And now with all of that out the way, I think we can get straight into, into the actual temperatures. Um, but one more thing before I do that, just a bit of a breakdown um, around how I got the, the system to the highest possible load um, and heat output. Uh, so what I did is I, I used the stress test in IDA64 
to push the CPU and the memory in the system to its maximum. And then I used Furmark for the graphics card, running at 4K and then just the standard preset. And I let it run for 10 minutes at a time um, and then kind of let the test run further beyond that. But usually the temperatures peaked at, tw at, at about 10 minutes and it kept steady all the way for no matter how long I ran the test. Um, yes, so now I think it's time to have a look at the figures. Now, I think that was actually a bit of a surprising result. I really thought there would have been a bigger difference. Um, initially, when I did the testing, I actually realized that there was no difference pretty much between having the fan there and not having it there and then i realized that it's probably because um, msi afterburner was kind of trying to keep the graphics card at that 75 degree limit um, the limit wasn't set at 75 degrees i immediately put the temperature kind of maximum all the way to like 92 degrees so it wasn't that it was trying to throttle it below that. All it did is it kept ramping up the fan, um, but it didn't ever go above like 50%, which was still pretty much inaudible on the card. Um, so the graphics card kind of didn't allow itself to go above 75 degrees. Um, so then I decided I had to rerun the tests because, well, at this point it made pretty much no difference, the fan. Um, except for a couple percentage points in like fan speed, like loudness or whatever. Um, so then what I did is I pegged the fan speed on the graphics card at 45%. Um, and then there was another weird result in that the GPU, the, the temperature didn't differ at all pretty much when it comes to having the fan there and not having it there. The biggest difference came with the CPU temperature, which changed by like three degrees Celsius, which I found a bit weird considering that the fan blows pretty much directly onto the GPU. And with the tests out of the way and the test results out of the way, I think it's pretty easy to draw a conclusion from this. Um, with the system that I have in the PC at the moment, which is a, a non-blower design GTX 1080 and a fairly decently overclocked i5, it seems to pretty much make no difference, um, which means that if you're, if you're doing a build like this in, in the S340, I don't think there's that much to be gained from buying a fan. Um, the CPU is going to run slightly cooler, and if that three degree difference is important to you, then yeah, go for it. Um, it's, it's, it's a worthwhile purchase because, you know, fans aren't that expensive. Um, but I don't think it's hugely necessary. I think if you're on quite a restricted budget and um, buying a fan is going to mean that you're going to spend have to spend less on something on, on an important um, on an important component like the graphics card or the CPU, then rather spend money on the GPU and the CPU, and maybe later down the line put a fan in if you want to. Um, but it's not hugely critical for you to do that. Um, I think the reason that NZXT doesn't actually include um, any intake fans on, on the S340 is because they pretty much assume that you're going to use an AIO in the PC. Um, so if you have an AIO, then you basically have intake fans that, that, that comes along with it. But if you're using a tower cooler, I don't think it's really that necessary. If you found this video entertaining or useful or just kind of informative on any level, uh, please do subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more content coming and maybe post it around because I'm sure some other people might actually find this information useful. Uh, oh yeah, maybe like the video as well or dislike it if you didn't like it. That's also useful, I guess. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye-bye.